Hello. My name is Alfred Marr. I'm specialized in internal medicine, working at St. Louis Hospital in Paris and France. It's my pleasure to give this lecture for a web-based conference, which is organized by the Rare Disease Network on autoimmune, autoimmune and autoinflammatory uh, diseases. So this conference is devoted to the management of giant cell arteritis. These are my disclosures. We have several guidelines available for the management of giant cell arteritis. There are two French recommendations. So one was published in a medical journal in 2016. It was done by the French study group for large vessel vasculitis. In 2017, we published a, what we call PNDS, which is governed by the Ministry of um, Health. And uh, we now also have European guidelines, which were recently updated by the European League Against the Rheumatism, and uh, which will come out uh, very soon. So the principles of treating giant cell arteritis can be broken down in three different treatment classes, glucocorticoids, adjunctive agents, and other medications. I won't touch any longer on other medications. Um, aspirin has long been recommended as uh, being uh, helpful or should be prescribed for giant cell arteritis, but these recommendations are not longer um, given. So aspirin could be given in selected patients if they have risk factors, vascular risk factors, but giant cell arteritis per se is not considered any longer an indication um, to give aspirin. Glucocorticoids are uh, the mainstay of therapy for giant cell arteritis. Um, in France, we often prescribe prednisone as preferred agent, and we calculate the initial dose to be given to a patient with newly diagnosed giant cell arteritis according to body weight. So our recommendation would be to give 0.7 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day for uncomplicated giant cell arteritis. And for patients with complicated giant cell arteritis with ischemic disease, especially eye disease, we would give a slightly higher initial dose of one milligram per kilogram body weight per day. So in other countries, often there is a paradigm of giving 40 milligrams per day or 60 milligrams per day, regardless of the body weight. So here we would more um, calculate the dose according to body weight. So uh, according to a recent study we did to get a sense for real life data, of management of giant cell arteritis based on 306 patients, recently diagnosed giant cell arteritis, almost 60 different investigators. So glucocorticoids were prescribed to all patients, which is somewhat expected, and in 97% of the patients it was even the first line single agent with no adjunctive agent being given. For intravenous methylprednisolone, um, there is no strong recommendations to give it to all patients. The only subset of patients, the only situation where IV methylprednisolone should be considered is patients with ocular involvement, as long as IV glucocorticoids are not delaying the initiation of therapy with glucocorticoids. The tapering scheme, most recommendations recommend to taper prednisone to approximately 10 milligrams per day at month six, and to five milligrams or even less as month two. Duration of therapy is not very clear, but recommendations say that it should be at minimum 12 months and maybe up to 12, uh, 24 months um, until you may consider withdrawal of prednisone, and uh, obviously in cases who have no uh, relapses. Adjunctive therapy given to, uh, in addition to glucocorticoids, there have been a number of uh, medications being tested in the context of giant cell arteritis. The two medications that really stand out in terms of um, having shown positive results and having been evaluated by several tri trials are methotrexate and tocilizumab. In a meta-analysis of, of three randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials using methotrexate, um, in this meta-analysis, there was a, an indication that methotrexate reduces the risk of relapse in patients with giant cell arteritis, and it even re 
reduces more the risk for two subsequent uh, relapses. The glucocorticoid sparing effect of methotrexate is about 20%. Um, compared to uh, the cumulative uh, glucocorticoid dose given to patients with placebo. Now we have two more clinical trials with good data, referring to the use of tocilizumab in addition to prednisone. Uh, the first trial being published was a smaller trial with 30 patients and a, a very fast uh, glucocorticoid tapering scheme in addition to tocilizumab or placebo. In this uh, trial, tocilizumab showed that it significantly reduced the risk of relapse at, uh, uh, after one year of uh, treatment with uh, tocilizumab. The bigger trial is called GIACTA. Uh, it was published two years ago, 251 patients. The primary endpoint was sustained remission at week 52. There were four arms in this trial, but the two arms I would really like to focus on is in green, uh, an arm where patients were treated with tocilizumab, weekly subcutaneous injections for one year, and in addition to a six-month tapering scheme of prednisone. And the blue arm was a reference arm with tocilizumab given as placebo and a one-year tapering scheme um, of um, prednisone. So let's just focus here on the green column and the blue column. Um, so there was a significant effect um, of uh, weekly injections of tocilizumab in terms of reaching the primary endpoint at one year, sustained uh, remission, which was achieved uh, by a significantly higher proportion of patients in the tocilizumab arm compared to the placebo arm. We now have three-year follow-up data for that uh, JACTA trial. Uh, these data were just shown at uh, ULAR uh, last month. Um, these, this um, couple of mile curve shows the survival without relapse up to uh, three years. Just to remind that the randomized phase was just for the first year, so everything that happened after year one um, was left in terms of treatment to the discretion um, of the investigators. This is just to remind you um, the uh, arm with tocilizumab treatment with weekly injections and the other arm uh, with placebo injections and a, a prednisone um, treatment given for one year. So when you look what happens at the end of the three-year follow-up, there's not so much of a difference in terms of um, relapse-free uh, survival. So this may be viewed as a little bit of a disappointment. In uh, any case, tocilizumab does not really cure the disease um, in all patients. Um, the good news is that there is a significant um, prednisone sparing effect uh, with um, the cumulative dose of prednisone giving, given to a patients receiving tocilizumab for one year, being on only half of what is given to patients who received the placebo. So, tocilizumab seems to be a very effective um, glucocorticoid sparing drug in um, uh, giant cell arteritis. So when should we initiate adjunctive therapy? So the French recommendations, which were published in 2016 and 2017, um, suggested two kinds of situations, um, either at second-line therapy, and I think this is the most common situations for patients uh, with multiple relapses under um, prednisone, or relapsing disease with um, GCA, which is dependent to at least 10 or to 15 milligrams of day of prednisone, or more than 7.5 milligrams per day of prednisone, or patients who poorly tolerate um, prednisone um, due to side effects. And then the subset of patients, and probably we also mentioned it as a few instances, um, the prescription of an adjunctive therapy could also be considered in patients right away from the diagnosis in the situation where uh, patients are at high risk of having um, poor tolerance of um, prednisone because of osteoporosis, hypertension, and diabetes. So the ULAR recommendations, which are brand new, uh, agree with the fact that adjunctive therapy should be uh, used in selected patients uh, with joint cell arthritis, which is either refractory to prednisone or a relapsing disease, and also for patients who are at increased risk of glucocorticoid-related adverse effects of complications. The difference compared to the French recommendations, which are a little bit older, is that ULA now really places tocilizumab um, before methotrexate 
So the recommendation from you is to use tocilizumab and to consider that methotrexate is possibly an alternative. There are a number of questions which are still left in, in, in terms of management of trans cell arteritis. For how long should we give adjunctive therapy? Trials that uh, evaluated tocilizumab and methotrexate used 12 months for the former and 24 months for the latter. Uh, should we tailor uh, GCA therapy based on the phenotype, whether it's cranial or large vessel GCA, but this, there, we have no good data to make such a recommendation at this time. Which therapy is more cost effective? And there will be also other effective medications to be tested in the future in joints and arthritis. So the key messages are in this slide. Um, oral glucocorticoids are still considered by most recommendations, but these recommendations I just showed as first-line single-agent therapy um, for most of the patients diagnosed with giant cell arteritis. Pulsed methyl, methyl prednisolone should be considered in patients with ocular involvement, and adjunctive therapy um, should be considered in selected cases, either because of relapsing refractory disease or as first-line therapy for patients at increased risk of uh, poorly tolerating glucocorticoids. Tocilizumab now seems favored over methotrexate. Thanks a lot for your attention.